Hello and welcome. It's me, Marvels44, and welcome to another Vanguard Zero deck and fight. Uh, this time we're going to be looking at uh, Spectral Duke slash PBO, uh, the Spectral Duke and PBO deck. Uh, this deck is really strong. Uh, tier 2 deck, I think it's the middle of Tier 2, if I'm not mistaken, uh, but it's a very, very good deck. Um, basically, you use a Spectral Duke Ride Chain into Duke, and uh, you use its restanding re potential um, with the amount of crits, with you know, your 9 crits, um, to pressure your opponent. Legit, I've won, game I've won a game when I rolled on grade 3 because my opponent did not have a PG. I pulled a crit, uh, and I only swung with, like, Spectral Duke. He was at 11k. <laughs> and, um... Pulled a crit, gave the power to Duke. Uh, I had Sharon behind him, but Sharon wasn't boosting. Uh, he pulled a trigger, I think. One trigger. Didn't pull another. Uh, he was sitting at two damage as well. So, the, the guy gave me four damage before, which was a mistake. Uh, I'll get into that after. But, before I hit grade three. But, uh, I restood, and then I pulled another crit. I used Sharon to boost, swung with Spectral Duke, pull, pulled another crit, swinging for 29. is like 26, I think. So, uh, yeah, four damage. Got hit again, didn't have a PG. That was game. He had to pull two heals. <laughs> I, um... Yeah, that was that was interesting. I thought I'd share that little story, but anyways, uh, so Spectral Duke PBO, very strong deck though, as I said. Um, we'll go into the budget deck afterwards of like what you could run instead. Although honestly, with how this deck works, there's not much you can knock out. Like you have to have almost everything here. Uh, the only thing that I could say, you don't necessarily need a hundred percent is Maka. Darkness made in Maka. You could replace it with something. But everything else you need for this deck to work. Um maybe, maybe, maybe you could trade Nemin in too. But that's that's that one's a little hard. Um anywho let's look into the deck. So we got Spectral Duke, if you don't know what he does. Um, limit break for once per turn. At the end of the battle, this unit attacked a Vanguard, counterblast two or entire two rear guards uh, to stand it and draw a card, and then it loses twin drive until end of turn. So that got a buff in this game. Um, and then its other skill is if Black uh, Dragon Knight Vortimer is in your soul, this unit gets plus 1k. And it can also be included in the Shadow Paladin deck. So there are some gold paladins that can be included in the Shadow Paladin deck. Um, Ren's cards, basically. So, like, this card. Um, and then the grade one of it, and the grade two of it, and the starter. They can all be included in this deck because they're Ren's cards, so... Shadow Paladin doesn't exist in the Asia circuit, but this is so Shadow Paladin can still be played, and honestly, it made some interesting decks because of it. I really like that they did this, and, uh... Yeah, yeah, I'm really happy that they did this, honestly. But anyways, let's look at the actual deck now, now that I explained what uh, Spectral Duke was. I already explained what PBO does, but um, why you run Spectral Duke PBO is because... Not because of the cross ride, because of the Persona Blast. So if you have a PBO in hand, and well, if you have two in hand, you can ride PBO after Spectral Duke. So then when PBO swings at the Vanguard, you drop it. So even if you already hit with the rear guard you're pretty much hitting with the Vanguard uh, because you'll have a booster. Because you're not going to kill the booster behind Spectral Duke when you resand because you need it for the extra power because you already hit. So if you pull the trigger, the, van the opposing Vanguard is going to be at like 21. So, so you need the boost because you only get one drive check. Uh, but it's nice to draw a card as well with Spectral Duke's ability because I have drawn PGs before and they have won me the game as well. Um, Spectral Duke's just very good. <laughs> very, very powerful. And the Spectral Duke Ezel deck is very good, too. Um, I haven't tried it out, so I want to test it before... I want to test it a bunch before I do a deck and fight. 
but I've been playing this one a lot. Before before Spectral Duke came out, I was playing Ezel all the time. You know, when Ezel came out. But now with this new set, I've been playing this like crazy, and I love it. Um, Ezel is better, but this deck is just so much fun for me, um, and just what you can do. I, I love this deck, honestly. This deck is so good. So what Bla Black Dragon Knight Vortimer does is um, Vanguard Circle, if Scout of Dark Darkness Vortimer is in your soul, it gets plus 1k at all times. Uh, so he's a 10k, and that's the Vortimer it's talking about is the grade 1 Vortimer. And he it also says, when rode upon by Spectral Duke Dragon, retire one of your rear guards. If you retire, call two cards from the top of your deck. So this deck is about getting you your pluses and then using those pluses against your opponent opponent to restand with the crit pressure. Um, that's pretty much what this deck does. And uh, PBO is the extra version to use Counter Blast to retire opponent's rear guards and using the Persona Blast and the crits in deck to do so as well, um, to pressure your opponent that way as well. Um, and Grade 1 Vortimer does the same thing. Uh, when Dragon Ball Vortimer is in the soul, he's AK. And when Rode Upon by the Grade 2, retire one of your rear guards. And then call the top two of your deck. And then the Grade 0, though, is when Rode Upon by the Grade 1 version. You look at seven cards from the top of your deck and add a Spectral Duke Vortimer. Uh, sorry, Spectral Duke Vortimer. Spectral Duke Dragon or a Black Knight Vortimer. A Black Dragon Knight Vortimer, so you either can get a Spectral Duke or the Grade 2 Vortimer. Um, the Grade 2 Vortimer is very important because if you miss the Grade 2 Vortimer, you don't get any Superior Calls. And I've won games without the Superior Calls, but the Superior Calls help so much. Um, and Nemen's here to help with that, and so is Babkar. They're both here to help with Superior Calls. Um, well, pluses. Nemen it gets you the pluses, gets you that extra card you would have gotten from the Vortimer ride chain, and Babcar just helps you with plussing as well. And also to refill your field, um, they both help you with that um, as well after restanding, and Nemen helps you get PGs easier as well. That's why I honestly have been finding this deck so consistent, and that's also why I've been finding it so much fun as well. Uh, PBO was very was such a standard kind of deck. It kind of did a little bit of everything. It wasn't too fancy. just kind of did its thing. Uh, this one, it has so many different ways to like manipulate the deck to make it work for you and make it work well. And I love what it does because of that. But yeah, so Ride Chain to get your pluses, to restand and kill those pluses that you got, and to pressure with the crits. Um, and then using other cards to get pluses as well. That's that's pretty much what the deck is. Um, so we have four PBO because backup Vanguard in a way, um, and also your other card for applying pressure because Persona Blast and, and gets the crit. Um, so that's very good that way, and you want to consistently do that as much as possible uh, most of the time. It depends, of course, depending on how your field looks, but... I don't use the retiring counter blast that much unless I kind of know I'm gonna win uh, or I'm pressuring my opponent out of all their cards in their hand because they have so many PGs or something. Um, so one or the other in that situation, Babcar helps you with plussing, refilling your field or just plussing when you don't get the ride chain or plussing in general just to help you resand more. Um, Gigan Tech Destroyer, just an extra extra hitter swings for 12k easy four Vortimers you need them um, we got four Nemens. you need her as well as I said she's just very good kind of bless one and discard a card draw two like very good for the deck to help you get the pluses that you either missed or get extra help you get PGs just helps in so many different ways three curse Lancer very important um, Honestly, I've debated running an extra one because Dark Mid Darkness Made in Maka is good uh, for this deck because of what she does with the Counter Blast 2 calling a grade 1 behind her. She's good for it. However, the only issue I keep finding with her, there's a core issue I find with her. You need to use her skill early on or else 
she's useless because later on in the game your triggers are going to be at the top because you put a lot at the bottom and you do lose a lot of deck in this game um, because of all the plussing so you still lose a lot of the deck but because of that if you use her skill late in the game it's going to shuffle the deck and now you don't know where, you, where your triggers are so you could have pulled a miracle heal or just pulled a heal and your opponent can't end you next turn but now you can't pull it or you could have pulled a crit that could have won you the game or just any kind of trigger to win you the game and now you don't pull it because you use her skill later on so she's kind of situational and i've thought about bumping her down to um one she's important for the deck don't get me wrong she's very important for the deck um and you do need her um but i've thought about bumping her down to one card because because of that situation should situation and bumping cursed lancer up to four copies but that's debatable um it could go either way because you know usually you for this deck you have your vanguard hitting their vanguard again just like azul so the unflipping sometimes doesn't work that's why i think the three cursed lancer works and you can run the two maka easy so i have thought about it but i didn't for that reason um your four grade one vortimer important your four sharon very important in this game because you need to just because you're retiring and all that your ak's are very important uh for behind your vanguard and also for just making columns like with Nemen, um, so it can hit 13k. And also, if your opponent has an AK front row and all you kind of have is have is Sharon, like you know, a Master of Pain from Azul, you can use Sharon to hit it. So that's really important for that reason. And then your one copy of Arian Rod, Arian Hod. Uh, sorry, you. It's a rest, drop, and draw. Usually what you kill early on, um, if you get it. But, well, I usually kill Vortimer if I get it. But my backup is this card. Uh, but a good rest, drop, and draw early on, if you need it as well. That's why sometimes I kill this card. Because I'll call behind the Vanguard, rest, drop, and draw. Uh, and it can help me get one of the Vortimers I'm missing if I didn't get it with the grade 0. Or if I wasn't able to ride the grade 1. Because you can still even if you don't ride the grade one. If you don't ride the grade two, you don't get any of the pluses it gets you. But if you don't ride the grade one and you ride the grade two, you can at least get a plus by riding Spectral Duke on top of it. So there's that. And the grade zero, of course, searches for one or the other. So it makes the deck very consistent in that factor. And of course, your four, four PGs. So it's a very powerful deck. And I, I, I feel like after the explanation I just gave you, you can kind of see how it's... um. Oh, it's kind of scary in a way and it can be a lot of fun to play uh, and as for options to consider to you know for budget decks um nothing for grade one honestly for grade threes nothing either it's really just your grade twos and you need your vortimers those are important uh your nemons you could run vaha like i said in the pbo one Thing is she is counter blast too so if you run vaha you don't really want maka at all and you could just run something like your um uh where is he your 10k so you can run rugos so basically what i'm saying is if you don't have maka run rugos just 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 for the fact to have a 10k front row at least um and if you don't have enough nemens run vaha as an alternative, but that means completely take out Maka and run Rugos. Other than that, there's nothing else. There, there's no other option. So, but that gives you some kind of budget option in case, because um, I know Nemen is this deck is kind of expensive. But I feel like decks are getting a little more expensive. But it's only because it's only on the decks we've pulled on before, and now uh, that existed like before Limit Break. So like this one with PBO and Nemen that you could have already picked up. Now Spectral Duke is added in because, yeah. Um, it's like Luthier as well. I'm trying to build Luthier, but there's so many triple R's I need. 
I got some OTT decks to do, but I'll get there. I'll get there. I'm doing these because these are the ones I want to do first. All right. So we have Rugos. We're going to put... It's a debate here whether or, we'll, whether or not I want to put Nemen back. You don't want to put Sharon back because you have Vortimer. I said Rugos. I meant Vortimer. I'm going to do it. Sometimes it's worth it. Okay. Okay. That wasn't worth it. But it's luck based. This might be a VP farmer. Okay, I have that. Ooh, I got Spectral Duke. Okay, okay. I can't tell what's a VP farmer. And then we can use that to get rid of something that we don't need. Um, I'm going to get rid of Bad Card. We'll get more of them, most likely. And PBO will be helpful if we get another PBO and we want to use that to try to do something. So, that's kind of what I go by with this. So, if this is a VP Farmer, I'll cut it at this point. I just kind of wanted to go over that because I had a pretty decent hand to kind of analyze there. <laughs> okay, hopefully this time we can find someone who's not a VP Farmer. Let's try it again. Nice thing I got my clan level up, but... Uh... I really want that level 50 with uh, Aichi, though. Like that Asia Circuit one, but... I'm enjoying this deck too much. It's too much. Is this, uh... We, this might be a person. This is probably a person. The event's going on right now, still. There's still, like, a couple days left, I think. So this is probably someone. Um, okay. This hand's not that great. So we're gonna do that. Okay, I got the grade 2 Vortimer. I can I can deal with that. Because when you ride... I did forget to mention, when you ride on top of the grade 0, and it's not a Vortimer that rides on top of it, it gets Superior Called. So, you get that plus at least. And because I have the grade 2 and it'll go into Spectral Duke, I'll kill that. And then get Superior Called too. So, that'll be kind of nice. Alright, this is a person. Cool. 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 What does this card do again? Alright, alright, alright. Playing the dragon one. The green dragon of plants. It's a plant deck. I don't know what else I'm supposed to say. Alright. Well, Sharon's a good backup vanguard as well. Not uh, backup ride, I mean. 8k. Any 8k is usually a good backup ride. Until we hit the next era, which is prob which probably until we hit like break ride, which probably won't be using AKs, but it, it might still be using AKs. I don't know. You don't know. All the cards just have so many effects. The effects just might overpower. Overpower it all. Depends, I don't know what they've done yet. Like I know it's out. I've been meaning to look into it. But I don't know what they I don't know what the cards uh what the decks are like yet. I've been wanting to look into it. Okay, she rolled the grade 2 one. So that's at least important for her, because that... Uh, 11k base. I haven't, I haven't really looked into a lot of these Neo Nectar cards, so I'm not really sure what a lot of them do. But... I know it's a lot of just, like, cloning. This is when the cloning really started. And not Nibutama, Nibutama cloning. It's cloning in the fact of like having multiple cards stay on the field rather than just like, oh, let me pull out my clones and then they go back at the end of the turn. Because I know that that's what Nibutama was at one point. Oh, now I get the grade one. Damn it. That kind of sucks, but it's okay. All right. Well, you caught a grade two out. Not really sure why, but... Well, extra damage. It's not bad if you can get that extra damage, but... Right there, it's questionable. A lot of the time, what you want to do when you do... When you ride your grade two uh, Vortimer... Especially if you have the ride chain going, it's 10k, and if you went first, that means your opponent has to be sitting at 8k or lower. 
So, if you call Sharon behind your Vanguard, or if you get, if you top deck a Sharon behind your Vanguard, even if you hit with the rear guard, you're still going to be able to hit with the Vanguard. And your Vanguard could pull a crit. So, that could mean you could deal like three damage right there. Easy. So, it is good to call out cards like this, but usually you get to kill a grade one and call out two, and I'll usually, if I don't get a share in there, I usually have one in hand and I'll call it behind my vanguard for that reason. Um, and it works very well. And of course, if you're fighting something like Kagero or Norikami, and um, usually against Norikami, because Kagero usually won't be able to retire your grade one, but uh, Saishin can retire grade zero or grade one. So I usually have to call a grade one or else I'll retire it and I don't get the plus. Um, so, yeah. You usually have like two back rows, basically, on, on your grade one ride. Um, and if you get this card to come out, the Welp Vortimer, that's at least nice. So what does this card do? Start your battle phase. All your units. Oh yes, this one. This unit gets plus three K. Call a card with same name. All right. I think I got it. Okay. So we ride Spectral Duke. So this. What sucks is I can't call a Sharon behind it now. That's an issue because I need some kind of booster. Uh, Sharon's really nice, but honestly, a seven K would be nice too. But luckily, I have a booster in hand. Unluckily, it's 11k base, so what I'm gonna do is that. With what I got, it's kinda what I have to do. That's all I can do. So now I can hit for 12k. Hopefully she doesn't pull the trigger. Nope, uh, of course. I, I said it, because I said it. Jinxed it. It's okay. I need a trigger. How many triggers are in deck, actually? That's not that bad. Oh. That's not that bad. Doesn't hit. Mmm. Okay. That's unfortunate. That's pretty unfortunate, honestly. And I have three PGs in hand, so it's not like... It's not like the next turn I can just... Throw shit down. I can't. But the next turn I will have a limit. Break. So... That's nice. Get to see the power of the crit restands. So, let you know, last game I just showed you quickly like how to kind of go about your hand um, while I was looking at it, um, and then it was a BB farmer. And then this game I actually get to play the game. I don't get the ride chain. Of course, that happens. It seems like when I did it with the Ezo, I got a crappy game the first time, but I got the superior ride. I just crappy game, and then the second one was a much better game for me, but I didn't get the spirit ride. Unlucky. Unlucky. Keep having to do two games. <laughs> Gotta walk my puppy. Ooh, a heal trigger. That's bad. That really sucks because she didn't get the heal trigger. I pull a crit, pop a PG. Restand. Possibly pop a PG or push her to five damage, but then she'd be at four. It's the fact that the next turn I could have popped a PG, whereas like now it's kind of tricky because she's gonna take the damage first. So if I pull a crit first, it becomes difficult. It's that PG made the difference right there. Basically. I would honestly attack the rear guard. It's not good to just randomly give Spectral Duke Limit Break. Like, Ezel, there's nothing you can do, but you don't just give Spectral Duke Limit Break like that unless you... Because I have three cards in hand. The fact that they're PGs is lucky for this person because if they're not PGs, I throw them down, and I can really go ham this turn. Wow. That's just crazy. I'm honestly tempted on calling one right now. I have to call two, actually. If I want to do something this turn, I'd have to call two. But because they're PGs, I can afford not to. It just means... I hope I don't pull a crit. 
I didn't. Okay, we're good. Bloody. Oh yeah, yeah. Right. I pulled a heal. And because I'm, if I was setting up five damage, I don't know. I probably still wouldn't. But oh, that heal made a difference, and the fact that I drew a PG there made a difference. But yeah, if these, usually you have like one or two PGs. So take into account that I'd have two cards in hand. I'd be able to kill, restand. If I pulled a crit there, it'd be scary, especially if it was a double crit, which I've done quite a lot. And it could be very scary for this person because that would pop a PG, but then I get to restand. And you don't just give Spectral Duke Limit Break. You kill the rear guards first. That's why it's a little easier to deal with Spectral Duke. With Ezel, yeah, you can kill their field, but the second they get Limit Break, the field comes back. And you can kind of weed out their hand and figure out how many PGs they have in hand with Ezel. So, while Ezel, Ezel can be countered that way, um, and especially MLB does it well, because it's like if you have PGs, MLB swings at your Vanguard, you can't hit... Uh, your PG drops if you're at 3 damage. So you can't get the limit break. Of course, you have self-damagers. This deck does not have self-damagers. So, really, attacking the rear guards... Kind of a big deal. This person may be in the lead, but uh, I can do a lot next turn if I get crits. If I get crits, I do a lot next turn. And two grade three fun rows, might I add. That's that's a tricky one. That's a tricky one. I will probably kill the grade three fun rows because why not? What do they do? Oh, it's a vanguard. Okay. Oh, it's the Musketeer one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And I still have two PGs. <laughs> I draw a grade two, and it's... I won't die next turn. Basically. That's not a grade... Do you... Are you a grade two? Do you look like a grade two to me? I don't think you look like a grade two at all. Um... Well, two PGs just popped, so they know I have two PGs. Um, I don't know how to go about this. I actually don't. I actually don't know how to go about this because I can't. Yeah, Duke just swing, just swing, just swing. Duke. All right, I'm gonna give it to Duke because. Let's go! Double trigger. That's what I'm. This is why you be careful against this deck. Oh, look at that. I re-stand. What's he at? 21. I could kill my back row. I could legit just kill the back row. Didn't pull a trigger. Pulled one trigger, I wouldn't kill the back row. I'd still be able to hit. Kill the back row, why not? Gigatech, Gigatan Destroyer can still swing. And Sharon can swing too. Man. Still have two PGs. Sentinel? Okay. Okay. Gonna kill that one standing alone. Look at that. The tables just turned. The tables have just turned. You be very careful with playing. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Right, right, right. I forgot. Because sometimes I, uh, I kind of swing, I think, a little too far ahead and forget one thing. That, like... Was that 21k? So... I forget, I forget stuff like that sometimes, and I'm like, crap. But, um, I'm not sure if it was the best decision, actually, to kill. I was hoping for another trigger, to be honest. Um, because I was hoping to get another trigger, maybe. And give it to Sharon, so Sharon can kill the other rear guard. Because I don't know if it was the best killing Vortimer, because now... Next turn, if I don't pull a trigger on the first twin drive, on my twin drive, like before I restand, ooh, before I restand, it's, it'll be kind of scary because, uh, I might not be able, I most likely can't hit the second time then. I'd have to take the risk. I mean, I, uh, my deck's pretty thinned out. And I have I had quite a few heals in deck. How many triggers do you have? Seven, two, three, 
So you have four triggers left in Zach. Two heals and a stand, a couple stands most likely. Okay, fair enough. I just healed you, so fair enough, fair enough. Nothing else good. Nothing else is gonna hit me. Because I hit 26 now. Or 31, but hopefully 26. Fingers crossed. Unless it's a heal. Uh, that's not what I want. But I think you get the idea how to play the deck. I did screw up. I should have retired Sharon and give it the power to Giga 10 Destroyer because I wouldn't. I was hoping for another trigger to kill the other rear guard, but honestly, I shouldn't have taken that gamble because now it messes me up this turn unless I draw a grade one. I've made this mistake a few times where I kind of gamble that way, and the gamble could have paid off, but honestly, it, it's not worth the risk. I just made that mistake right here, and you could see. You could see it. Which is good. I get to show the mistake off because I've made it a few times. I kind of think a little too much sometimes, and I just... I make the wrong choice because of it. I think of all the options, but then sometimes I forget something, but... Oh... Uh, I only have two crits in deck, too. If I pull a crit, they have the person has another sen sentinel. I could be okay. Because then re-stand and... Okay, so I have a grade two, so you can't finish me off next turn because of my PGs. This is going to be a long game. What's going on now? Why is it... I hate when it does this. I hate, I hate so much when it does this. So I'm not going... Oh. Okay, I was about to say, I'm not sure what's going on, but it was frozen like that for like a minute or two. All right, luckily, I got the Scout Vortimer. So what I can do... <laughs> call it. See, in this situation, her skill doesn't help me. Of course, Cursed Lancer's skill won't really help me either. There's nothing on the flip. It's like one card, but doesn't do anything for me. Oh, really? Don't disconnect, please. I'm getting a good game. No, I don't want to invoke it. Hi, bastard. My puppy's here. Okay, we're gonna swing. Come on, pull a crit, pull a crit, pull a crit. Oh, uh, no, not a crit. Okay, okay. Can you not get a trigger? Okay, that's fine. No, it's not worth it. I'll lose next turn. I will flat out lose next turn. It's not worth it. Hold on. He wants to be let out. Kind of in the middle of this, but the uh, person reconnect? Yeah, yeah. Some way or another, I always get interrupted in these recordings. <laughs> uh, I just like to cut the camera out during that, because, yeah. Okay. Alright. Oh, okay, so they're all going to be at, like... Oh, no, they only gain 3k. Right, okay. I thought they gained, like, 3k. E That's my bad. But... Ooh, wait probably still has stand triggers. That's bad. That could end me, then. A stand trigger could end me. I have one E L left in deck. It has to be at the top of the deck if she pulls a stand trigger. And there's a good chance she pulls a stand trigger. She's eight cards at that. Oh, no, we're good! Maybe she hasn't been A. Mmm. <laughs> Alright, so... This turn I throw everything down risk it. Risk it for the biscuit. I'm gonna swing with the rear guards and just. I have to. Ho okay, that's an intercept. Nice. Yeah, I swing with the rear guard. I. What will that net me? That the swinging with the rear guard isn't gonna net me much. I can't do anything. I need. I need to get the crit. I have 12 cards in deck. Two crits left. There's a good chance I get a crit. There it is. Game's over. Game should be over. The person checked the PG last turn as well. So, unless the game is most likely over, the only chance this person has the 
the only chance this person has, I'm gonna leave Nimane here, just just because. Of oh, that sucks. I was hoping for the, for the extra crit, but the only chance this person has is, is is if they have the final PG. That's also why I did that. I was hoping to full, pull the heal next time. But... Ah no! That's all the P. That's all their PGs. Damn! I was hoping they had two PGs in hand. I was hoping this person had two PGs in hand. Did not. This person did not have two PGs in hand. That's unfortunate. That's all my heal triggers, all my PGs. I have a crit, but that's it's in my hand. Um Yeah, the game's over. You just person slaps down everything. It's over. Just push that card up. Kill Nemen. Swing swing. No triggers left in deck because I just drew the If I didn't draw the crit, the crit being in deck could still help, but because of the limit break, like it's no counter blast. It just it just activates. So because of that, um, yeah, slower decks are not that great in this game. But this neon actor isn't fast, but it's not slow. Um, mm. Spectral Duke PBO is a fast deck, but unfortunately, I just honestly I just got unlucky. Like, that's just it. I just, I got unlucky. I got all the PGs. If I didn't have the PGs, I could have probably applied more pressure and lived as well on top of it. Okay, well, there's, there's the sand trigger that could have ended me last turn. <laughs> just, are you rubbing it in my face? I think this person is rubbing it in my face. Yeah, that's it. That's the game. I think that was a good example of what Spectral Duke PBO does. Um, basically, you get the crit, you swing, you force out a PG, you restand, you force out another PG, or you end the game. That's that's basically how you play the game. I think I, I've won against an MLB player who had like two damage as well. That wasn't the same one that I was talking about. There was another player who didn't have a Sentinel, but I, I just remembered I won against another player who did that. But I think. I think I had PBO, I dropped another copy, hoping for a crit to just do some kind of pressure, and then I pulled double crit, didn't have a PG, so it took four damage, didn't pull a single heal trigger. So, yeah, that that was the game. Um, not the best game, again, but I think it was good enough to show you guys how the deck runs and what you kind of have to do, and of course I made a mistake during it. Um, I said... Hopefully it doesn't cost me. It did cost me. Um, because if I restood there, that definitely would have made a difference, I think. Um, maybe not, because Nemain couldn't really swing, but Nemain didn't really do anything that turn anyways. So, yeah, that... The fact that I couldn't restand that turn because... Because I didn't call Sharon behind my Vanguard messed me up big time. That cost me the game that one attack cost me the game because it would have gotten the extra attack would have had the extra damage forced out more sentinels earlier and i maybe could have won i still probably would have lost thinking about it and like how the scenario went it would have changed a lot um because it was a couple turns that it changed and like a couple of my turns that it would have changed still her turns still like my turns not my turns my turns Stay with me. My turns. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, well, that's the deck. I hope you guys understand it well enough. And of course, playing it by yourself and uh, playing the different scenarios and, and the different games helps you learn how to use the deck as well. Um, you can't totally learn it this way, but this way definitely helps. I showed you the hand the first time. And then this time, again, I showed you how the deck went. So. Hopefully you have a good enough understanding with how the deck runs. And uh, that is all, guys. I hope you all enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys next time.